our next guest. He is the first, the one and only, the first PhD, the Doctor of Philosophy on Construction Biology and Ecology in the world. That is correct. Nowadays, he's uh, studying in his office in Istanbul, Kuzguncuk, a lovely place. He's studying on ecological architecture and his academical studies. He has a story he will tell himself. Please welcome Mr. Ant Akman. Thank you very much. Welcome. Hello. Um, I want to talk about the importance of the identity uh, of the mountain regions, especially for the architecture. How important is it for the architecture, the identity uh, of the people who live in the mountains? Uh, I choose this uh, Ararat with masses, masses with Ararat, because every mountain has uh, four facades, uh, and every side of the mountain is different. So we can't say that is uh, we can't say it's and, we must say it's with Ararat. Um, the first time when I saw the Ararat, that was 30 years ago, um, I climbed the mountain from the Erevan side, and uh, we saw Erevan as a big city, especially at night, and, but we couldn't go there. So, because there was the border, it was uh, to this time the Soviet Union, and when we came back from the mountain to Oder, uh, um, I saw, made the experience that the people in Oder have a connection uh, with the people in Erevan. They had their local social life in there. Uh, no matter how the ethnic differences are, uh, the nationality differences are, the local social uh, Connections were there. So the people in Uder said to us, let's go to Erevan, we can go, we do it always. And uh, that was a very big experience for me to see how the people share a mountain. My next... Uh, uh, so I will ask you the question, what it feels like to be in the mountains? What do we feel when we are in the mountain? Do we feel holism? Do we feel us safe in the mountains? Uh, or uh, can we imagine a skyscraper, for example, in a mountain region? Or is it a human habitation in harmony with the environment? Can you imagine there, for example, Empire State Building? We have to think about that. So the mountains show us, uh, also for the architecture, uh, how we can build uh, living places. Uh, let's try to see this topography. Uh, one side is completely different than the other one. Uh, it's a, also a living place. Uh, maybe we can imagine it uh, as a city. It could be also the, a city plan. Uh, here we have from the east face the Mount Masses. They share the same mountain on the other side with the name Ararat, it's the same mountain, uh, and they are in connection with each other. Examples like that, we see these uh, in all of the world, not only now uh, the example of uh, Mount Masis or Ararat. I will show you uh, some other pictures, uh, examples, uh, how that is also in other uh, regions. This is the Mount Cervino from the Broil Valley, the Italy side. It's one of the richest regions in the world. The same mountain, most of them uh, of you uh, will know it, I think, when we see the next slide. The Mount Cervino is also the Matterhorn from the valleys from the Swiss side. The people from the Italian side and the Swiss side, they share this mountain. And they, uh, with the tourism, they earn a lot of money with that. So they don't have the uh, different, you are Swiss, you are Italian. They say, we are a local group of people, and that's our mountain. 
The Mount Komologma, for example, from the Kumbu Valley, it's in Nepal. The people, they share it with their yaks. On the other side is the site of um, Tibet. It has another name, the same mountain, Sagarmata, from the same Roque Valley. We know this mountain as Mount Everest. Uh, the guy never saw this mountain, but we know it as Everest, but the mountain, the same mountain, has two names, Komologma and Sagarmata, and the people uh, of both sides uh, are in connection. The Mount Basodino on the Piemont from the Italian side, um, this is a slide uh, which I made. Uh, during the time when I worked uh, in the Alps as an architect, uh, I used to spend my um, summers as a sheperman on the Alps. So this is the same mountain from the Tessin, from the Swiss side. And uh, here on this mountain, there are little grottos uh, for the sheperman uh, to bring their sheep in protection. And uh, grottos like that, uh, that's my architect, my friend Stefan Klemp. And uh, from the Italian side and from the Swiss side, both sheepermen used these grottos uh, for more than hundreds of years. The same uh, similar situation is, for example, in the Offenhorn from the Bean Valley. Uh, the Bean Valley is um, also between Swiss, Switzerland and Italy. And uh, the people from the uh, Swiss side, they bring their uh, cows to this Alp, Ladils. Uh, there I spent uh, several times the whole summer as a shipperman. Uh, the cows they spent, uh, the cows they spent the summer here. And after that, they go to the Italian side and um, to this pass road down to the Piemont, to Italy. And uh, other sheepermen, uh, they um, take the same cow, so they have a um, connection with each other about these anim uh, with these animals. They share the same mountain as a living place. So, uh, Let's ask, ask the question, uh, why do certain places make us feel good? Uh, anthropologists tell us we are hardwired to respond to nature. And people whiskerly... No, that was too fast. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's look at this picture now and try to see it, for example, as a living place or as our buildings. Each sides are different. Just look at it as a form to that. It also can be a cake or a shown uh, newspaper, maybe. Uh, but we can see it as a living place. So if you look at in that frame, uh, the buildings, uh, they move away from the term house and come closer to the term home. And that's very important for us today uh, because we need the term home to feel us good. Now, at last, uh, three examples from uh, my designs. This is uh, in Italy. The south side facade and the north side facade are completely different. The mountains show us that, that we have to uh, act to the climate. That's another design. On the upper side, you see the south front, and on the other side, you see the north front. They must be completely different. Not like the Toki buildings or Empire State where all facades are the same. We have to build different facades for every direction. The last example is uh, another design. And here also it's a wood building. The south facade and the north facade are completely different from each other because there are uh, different uh, climate influences. And if we do that, uh, it's very important for the people to uh, get the feeling we are at home. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rachman. Please stay on the stage. I'm sure our audience has some tremendous questions. Yes, I knew it. Yes, mister. 
Our microphone is arriving. The microphone. No, 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 not this one. You're going to use this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Arsen Haratyan, uh, part of the Armenian J Turkish Journalist Bus Tour. Thank you for a great presentation. You, you touched upon, I think, a, a key topic for Armenians and Turks. And, and, and here is my question. Uh, how do you think mountain Ararat can be used for Armenians and Turks in order to further go into a dialogue? And if uh, you brought some examples from Italy, Switzerland, and other places, um, is there, uh, and I'm sure their topography and their toponymics, mm -hmm. calling the mountain differently at different periods of history impacted their relationships, whether it was whatever. But, but it, have they used elements of geography such as mountains in order to uh, get better relations? And do you think uh, Mount Ararat has the capacity, uh, not, I, I don't want to call it a capacity, but a way we could use the mountain as a symbol in order to bring people together? Mount Ararat is uh, one of these mountains in the world who has a very uh, big symbolic uh, value. And uh, there are not so many mountains in the world uh, which have so, uh, s such a big uh, value, symbolic value. Um, my opinion is that the solution is local. The people around Ararat, no matter from which side they are, uh, let it to them, they will solve the problem. It's difficult if you try to solve the problem from capital cities, for example, with politic ways. Uh, own local dynamics uh, bring their um, healthy s uh, solutions. Uh, maybe we must focus us uh, to the people, uh, to the in situ people around the Ararat. So maybe I could. Uh, under, uh, answered your question. Thank you. One more question, ladies and gentlemen. No more. What do you think about the mountains in Turkey? Another question? Uh, mountains in Turkey. There are also uh, several mountains in Turkey who have uh, different names. Uh, in the Kachka region, for example, uh, Varchenik and uh, Machapange are the same mountain. One is from the uh, Rize side, the other is from the Salachur side. And uh, there's a big potential also to earn money. But uh, uh, the healthiest uh, solution is if the people who are there uh, do this. Mm -hmm. um, the example Matehorn and the example in the Alps show us that. That the local people can do that uh, at the best. I see. So you're uh, believing in local, uh, I mean, uh, directions. Local governments can do this. Or the uh, local lo lo Local residents. dynamics, uh, local organizations, local uh -huh. dynamics. Uh, it's the same for the architecture. You have to think local. And the architect must be from that region. Only the architect who has uh, grown up there uh, can uh, feel the best solution for the right architecture for that valley or for that mountain region, for example, or for that uh, shore side. It doesn't only have to be a mountain mm -hmm. region. Uh, it can also be a shore side, for example. But uh, the local people, uh, I think, bring always the best solutions for their own locality. Because they know the region more yes. than anyone else. Thank you very much. Uh, you. We have a question in here. One more question. One last question. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, did I understand you correctly that 30 years ago you managed to go to Yerevan from Iqdir? I would love to hear that story if I understood you correctly. It must have been an exciting adventure. Uh, I didn't understand the question. The story once more? Or well, <laughs> when you went to Ararat for the first time, yes. you said, did you go from Iqdir to Yerevan? 30 no, years I, didn't, ago? I didn't go. How but the people, the people from Udr, uh, they said to us, let's go to Erevan. We go uh, nearly every day to Erevan and spend there a few days and come back. Uh, I didn't go, but it was a very uh, fantastic situation for me that uh, I saw that it is possible. Uh, also, the people from Erevan or uh, from the little uh, living places around Erevan uh, came to Udr. And they had a little trade. 
uh, between us, uh, be in between. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mr. Ant Akman was